Hi everyone, I am Mr. Martinez, the band director, teacher of instrumental music, and advisor for the Triumph Music Honor Society at Cedar Creek High School. What you're about to watch are some questions that we've received from prospective students about our music program that we have here. Uh, the people and students answering these questions are members of our Triumph Music Honor Society, which is our music honor society um, here at Cedar Creek High School, and they've taken the time to review your questions and answer everything you need to know about our wonderful music program. So um, sit back, relax, and watch. If you want to skip around and uh, review any questions that pertain to you specifically, um, feel free to check the timestamps below and uh, click around if you need to. If not, feel free to watch the whole thing. I hope you enjoy and if you have any questions at all, feel free to email me at manuelmartinez at gerst.net. So Mr. Martinez is the teacher who runs through the band classes. Band classes lets you be in the concert band performances that get put on one in the winter, one in the spring. Mr. Martinez is a great teacher. He helps you uh, figure out more and he goes deeper into music than you thought you would be able to know. He makes sure that everybody who takes his class and is going to be performing know all about dynamics of music, the articulation in music, the notes, the rhythms, and he basically makes sure that everybody is like a professional level musician. He also picks a variety of music types, so sometimes you'll get uh, like a chorale, sometimes you'll get like a pop song, sometimes you get like a jazzy song or like maybe like a slower lyrical song. He tries to make you as rounded as he possibly can with the music tab in you, basically. And overall the classes are really enjoyable to be in. You go through a uh, agenda every single day that you walk in so you know that you're going to walk in away and come out better. Every time I walk into that classroom I know that I'm going to walk out and I'm going to achieve something and I'm going to be better at something that I wasn't be able to do before I walked into the class or last class. He also tries to pick challenging pieces so that way you're not just sitting at the same level that you should be and that you are actually growing and that you actually take away something from this class and that you learn something about instruments and music. Not to mention band class, you guys are all hearing each other play, you guys are all talking about each other, you guys are helping each other out if you have questions. So you make a lot of friends very quickly in that class and you learn that band is basically like a giant family for all you guys and that you guys all get closer and you get amazing friendships that will basically last last a lifetime. Everybody is mostly happy and everybody just wants to go there and have a creative outlet if they take it more than one year and band is just basically a place where you can be you and you can have fun and you can still get stuff done in the same manner and that you know you know that you're going to be getting better at something while you're not going to be dreading that you took the class. While you're in the band class, just know that uh, the performances that you put on to so the winter concerts and the spring concerts, they do count as a grade, but you know, that should never be a problem because you worked so hard for all those months to put together the pieces and to make sure that you were getting better at the pieces so that way they sounded as best as they possibly could. Why wouldn't you want to perform it? So you can invite parents over, you can invite your friends, you can invite other students over, and you can perform for them. So if you're definitely thinking about taking a band class, I would definitely try to fit band into your schedule if you play an instrument or if you want to learn, definitely pick instrumental music because band is just a great experience and I'm pretty sure nobody has ever said anything bad about being in a band class because everything is just so eye-opening and you can just learn different things and different experiences and you'll learn a lot about other people and people's friends and you'll learn how to make new friends a lot easier than you probably have before. So if you're definitely thinking about picking band, you should definitely fit band into your schedule. One of our lesser known classes offered by Cedar Creek's music program is our Honors Music Theories class. It's very likely that all of your favorite musicians are well known because of their distinct styles of music. 
a style that has been developed over years of honing their knowledge in on music theory. Yes, even music has rules, and in order to break them, you first need to learn them. Which is exactly what you do in honors you of theory. The beginning will very likely be review for you. You'll be relearning things like scales, your key signatures, the like. And it might seem a little tedious, but I promise it's worth it. From there, things will start to get complicated. I am a wind player and I read primarily in treble clef, but in order to progress in music theory, I had to learn how to read in bass. Eventually, your knowledge will build up to the point that you are able to create your own compositions and pieces, which is the primary goal of this class. It may not be really satisfying in the beginning, as there is a lot of rules to abide by and a lot of things to remember, and you may not sound totally like your favorite musicians. But trust me, it is much better to start off slow and steady, that way, when you are building up, you have something to reference. In the end, honors music theory isn't just a way for you to make cool compositions for yourself. It'll also be one of the many ways that you can hone your skills as a musician and become better. Instrumental music is basically like a sort of free lesson for whatever instrument you either want to learn or are already semi-proficient in. It's good for like beginners and also people that have been playing their instrument for a while. What it entails is kind of just like, it's like lessons. You have like a certain goal for the week and then you have to either complete that goal or don't complete that goal, but be fully honest about it. And um, just, it's overall just about improving on whatever instrument you're learning. Choir is the non-audition choir class here at Creek. If you feel you need work or improvement, choir is the class for you. In this class, you learn about pitch, rhythm, tone, etc. You'll also be in Creek's concert choir and will learn a range of different songs to perform in the winter and spring concert. This class is a lot of fun. It is a very chill and calm class. You also get to learn music from our fantastic music teacher, Mr. Goodrich. If you've never done choir before, um, it's great to start out and um, see like what your range is. Class ranges from baritones to tenors to altos, sopranos, basses, um, and just it really is a chance for you to see where your voice can go. I personally am an alto because my voice can only go so high and I personally think it is a very fun class. You get to make many friends along the way and you also, you know, sing songs that maybe you've never heard of before that you learn to love. Um, it also means you could have a chance at a solo maybe for the winter concert, spring concert. Yeah, choir is an amazing class. I'm glad that I joined it when I did and I'll probably be pursuing it in college, hopefully. I walked into this class sophomore year. I had tried out my freshman year and I got in. And so sophomore year, I walked into this class on the first day of school and everybody in there was the kindest person ever. I made lifelong friends with them. I still talk to them, most of them to this day. Um, they're great people. It's just a really good outlet to make new friends that you might not know. Um, the people are incredible and it just gives you kind of a new outlook. I didn't really know any theater kids. There were a couple theater kids in there. There were swimmers, there were singers, there obviously there were singers. There were dancers, <laughs> there were like mathletes. It was eye-opening and it was really good. Um, and I love this class. So when you audition, you sing the same song for the part that you want to audition for. If you are scared, don't think about it. I was terrified going into that audition. My face was all red, I was shaking, and I walked into the classroom. I had never met Mr. Goodrich in my life, and he was the kindest soul, and I messed up my audition very, very badly, and I still got in. So if you're scared, don't let it affect your audition. Uh, the class overall is really good and it's not just like you're singing a song, you're actually learning about the song and he teaches you kind of the history of that song and he also helps you with notes. So I myself came in knowing how to read music a little bit and he really helped me to like 
get invested in it and to learn the words like crescendo and decrescendo and it stuck with me and I remember them and he continues to remind us of the words and he continues to teach us new words that we don't know. Um, he teaches you how to control your voice so you can go from low to high and high to low and you can sing very, very, very quietly with your mouth still at the full capacity that it can open. Uh, it's really fun and the exercises that he has us do for it is fun too. Um, he's an amazing teacher and I don't know where I'd be without Goodrich. I would highly recommend you take this class because it is really amazing and you're going to not only learn more about music and learn how to control your voice better, but you are also going to make a lifelong friend. History of Rock and Roll is taught by Mr. Goodrich and it is a class that can be chosen as an elective at Cedar Creek. It is basically a music class where you learn about the history of music from the late 1940s to the early 1950s and then you progress into the 2000s. Most of the time during the year is spent learning about the 50s and the 60s. Um, something that you would talk about in the class is how socially what was going on in the world affected the outcome of music and what people wrote about. In the class you do a lot of listening to different music, watching movies or documentaries to further help your understanding of what you're learning about. And an example of an assignment that you would have to do is once every trimester, you would basically get assigned a project based on the time period that you're learning about, and you have to create some sort of slideshow or something just to show that you know what you're talking about. And that's basically it. So if you're interested in taking a music class like this, um, go ahead and sign up for History Rock and Roll. So marching band is one of the activities at Cedar Creek. It runs from 6 to 8 on Tuesdays from August to November. I know 6 to 8 sounds really late at night, but that's because a lot of us do sports and activities. Yes, you can do a sport and be in marching band. I do tennis. Uh, a lot of my friends do cross country. Um, some people do soccer. Band camp. Uh, is the first thing. It's like how we get started. It's in August. Um, we meet all the new members, play around, play, I mean play on their instruments, of course. You know, we learn to march. Man camp is a lot of fun. Get to see all the people that we haven't seen all summer. So the main thing about marching band is we play at the football games. We go to pretty much mostly every football game. Uh, we play in the stands. Um, every time they make a touchdown, we're up playing the fight song. It's really fun if you're interested in football or if you want to learn how football works. Yeah, you get a free ticket to every game. We get to play at halftime. It's, it's really fun. If you like performing, you perform every single week. And we also do parades. That really gets us um, closer together. Marching band is like a family, and so the parades, like the Christmas parade, is so cold. And so it's like, we're all cold together. Yeah, but it's, it's not that bad, it's okay. But marching band is really like a big family. We have a group chat that we talk on all the time, even after marching band ends. Yeah, we're, we're really close. Marching band is really great. I would definitely recommend it. And please join. So one activity that the um, performing arts instrumental section has to offer is jazz band, where you can take your current instrument that you have, or you may end up learning a new instrument, which for me, I'm actually a doubler. I've um, played tenor saxophone, but mainly I play clarinet. And what I've learned from that is it's a lot different from the clarinet, <laughs> to be honest with you. And you get to learn the history of many jazz um, artists. You get to play a lot of jazz music, you know, understand why jazz music is the way that it is, aside from concert music. And um, it's um, kind of like concert band in a way, too. So if you want to sign up for it, hey, I won't be opposed to that idea. <laughs> After School Choir is a club that generally starts from 3.30 to 4.30, and it's just a club where people can just come in, learn some songs, and sing them. 
It's run by our choir director and music teacher, Mr. Goodrich. And there's different days. There's days for the trebles, which is the girls group. And then there's days for the basses, which is the guys group. Um, you don't have to be in concert choir to do after school choir. You don't need that in your schedule. It's just an after school thing once or twice a week and you're, you're good. Um, it's really fun. You make a lot of new friends and you learn a little bit more about music. Sometimes Goodrich might even let you help with the songs, which is a major plus. And the answer is no. You can do just concert band if you want, just marching band if you want, or you could do both. Uh, for myself, I only did concert band up until my junior year when I joined marching band. and. I really like doing both, so it's highly recommended that you do both concert band and marching band, but it's not required that you have to do one or the other. And I'll be talking to you today about the winter concert and what that entails. So first, the winter concert is always a fun time for everyone involved. It's a time to listen to, to some good music, to see what the band has been working on, as well as the time for the band to show off and really, really work out the last kinks of our music and put on an amazing performance, which we love to do. So the winter concert typically involves three to five songs that we worked almost nonstop on in band class every day. We've been working on these songs, trying to hammer out the kinks in them, getting them just right, learning dynamics, notes, rhythms, which tend to be a struggle sometimes for even the best of us, uh, as we try and get everything perfect. And then once you have those mechanical bits down, uh, you have to start putting feeling into it. So what we do is we make sure we get all those little bits down, the mechanical bits as well as the mental bits and the emotional bits, uh, and then we can condense them all into this lovely to watch uh, two hour performance that we also do with our choir. So you can come, you can sit down, and you can see the fruits of our hard labor uh, and get a lovely show out of it that we are so excited to give to you and it's just an amazing thing to be a part of that because you have a hand in creating something that hundreds of people are going to see and you're going to do a great job with it and people are going to be talking about it for a while. So one of the performances that the marching band puts on is uh, we play at the home uh, football games we play at halftime. So that's always really fun. Usually before a performance you're really nervous, you have you know the jitters, you got butterflies. Um, and so it's fun to have that. I mean like for me it's like an adrenaline rush. It's, um, it's really like fun, I like that feeling. Um, so we get that every week, uh, it's, yeah, it's really fun. We march onto the field and then we, you know, start playing, we do our drill and it's a good, it's a really good way to, if you really like performing, then you perform at every home game. So that's what, that's what I like about it. Um, we also play in the stands at every football game, mostly every football game we play in the stands. It's a good way to get the crowd pumped up, to they know that we're supporting them because there's just so much energy going on. That's what I love about it. And, um, you know, it's not some slow thing. You're always playing music that's pretty fast and energetic and loud. <laughs> um, and it's really fun. So usually we have one big performance at the school for like the parents and people who want to come watch and that's when we put the whole selection of six 
songs or however however many we do that year and it's it's a fun time and you know it's basically just performing to a crowd um but the next the next thing that we do are festivals and basically that is is like a huge gathering of jazz bands and stuff and those like there's one at Rowan that we go to there's one at mainland we go to and then we were also supposed to go to a Stockton Jazz Festival and an Oakcrest Jazz Festival last year. And basically what you do is you get there, you watch one or two uh, bands play ahead of you, then you get on stage, warm up, and you play about three or four songs for a selection of judges and stuff. And basically after you're done playing, they come up on stage and critique you, give you tips, you know, stuff that, things that you might have missed, things to make your performance better. And then you go into the crowd and you watch basically the rest of the festival and at the end of it they give out awards and stuff like you know best soloist and they give they basically give you a rating compared to all the other jazz bands and then the last thing is the teen arts festival this is like this big gathering of uh performing arts in downtown hamilton and basically what you can do is you can walk around like eat do what you want in downtown hamilton watch other people like theater stuff um, you know, like choir stuff, and then at some point you go up into this little uh, performing area, and you do a couple songs in front of some judges, and they give you a rating again. And yeah, that's the stuff the jazz band does. Stockton Choral Day, the Cedar Creek Open House, and the Roundhouse Museum performance. So let's just jump right into it and get started. So first. Um, every year, Stockton puts on, there's a day where Stockton will invite a bunch of different choir programs from schools across the state and even some from Pennsylvania, um, and we'll just sing together. Um, so each school will take a couple songs that they've practiced and like do a mini concert for all of the other schools that are there. Um, it's a chance to show off, it's a chance to perform and shine and just show what our choir program can do and then the other schools will do the same and you know there, there's no nobody wins there's no judging the judges will give feedback on how each of the schools did but it's really just for fun it's just to you know get to know some of the other choir programs just to experience what other schools are like and what they do and it's also just a way to hang out with other people who like music and make some friends that way so it's a really great day they feed you lunch um, you get to interact with a bunch of different people there's a lot of laughs, there's a lot of jokes, there's a lot of beautiful music that gets made. So it's just, it's a really fun day. Second, um, Cedar Creek does an open house every year. What that is, is we invite in, who would be incoming freshmen. So basically eighth graders, like current eighth graders. And we invite them to Cedar Creek for a day. And um, a lot of, you know, um, after school programs will be like just demonstrating what they do. But specifically for the choir program, um, the concert choir will put on a little performance and then the select choir which is an audition only choir um will just will just perform a song and like it's basically just a way to introduce the incoming students like what our program is about and what kind of songs we perform what we do it's just, it's just an introduction saying hi we're here um we like to sing we hope you do too um and this is what it's like so it's like kind of an immersion experience which is really awesome and that's just you know a day where students can come in and just see what we're like. And then the last one is the Roundhouse Museum. So there's a building in Egg Harbor City called the Roundhouse Museum. And every year the Historical Society invites a uh, Cedar Creek Choir to just come sing, come perform for their enjoyment. And it's really fun. They usually have snacks and drinks and they get to, you get to talk to them. And then th they always love us. They love hearing us sing and perform. Um, and it's just, again, a chance to, you know, sing, show off, perform for some people, get some people to, you know, understand what we do. And they really love it. And they always invite us back every year. And it's really fun. Usually it happens in the winter time, so it gets a little chilly, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun once you get inside and you start singing and you just, you like seeing the smiles on the people's faces as you're singing. It's a really rewarding experience. Our winter and spring concerts. Our winter concert, usually held in early December, is of course winter themed where we feature a lot of festive music. Our 2020 winter concert featured One Light, a Hanukkah song, and Silent Night, recognizable songs from The Polar Express and How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and many others. It's a great feeling to bring lots of holiday cheer into the community through our winter concert, and it's always a memorable experience. 
Our spring concert, uh, which is held towards the end of the school year, has a more eclectic range of pieces. Our upcoming concert will feature more traditional choral pieces like That Ever I Saw, and also pieces from popular movies like The Greatest Showman. The spring concert is a great time because you'll sing songs that you're familiar with and potentially get to try out a cappella songs and just overall have a lot of fun. Both concerts feature performances by our chorus, men's choir, women's choir, and select choir. This whole program really makes you feel like a family and dressing up formally and performing as best you can in the winter and spring concert really makes you feel like you're part of something. My favorite thing is that Mr. Goodrich makes it as easy as possible to become the best singer you can be. He makes it easy to become better by staying after school or giving you additional help in class. So to all of those thinking of joining our choir program, I highly recommend it. Thank you. Hey guys, so I'm here to talk to you today about our Teen Arts Festival, which occurs every year in May. Um, it's held in the downtown district in Hamilton, and students from choir, band, media, art, drama, and even dance all have the opportunity to perform at this event as well as get critiqued, which is a pretty rare opportunity. And not only that, but these students who attend can also watch other high school performances, so you're definitely going to be exposed to different types of music, art, drama, dance, and so on. Um, not only that, but the students who attend the Teen Arts Festival, they get the chance to attend different workshops. Um, there's a lot of diversity within these workshops since they're all offered in different genres. Um, and the most important thing to consider is that every county in New Jersey does hold their own Teen Arts Festival, but the top performances at each individual festival get the chance to perform at the statewide Teen Arts Festival, which is always held in early June. Um, and Select Choir does perform at this event every year, so if you're looking to get involved, maybe check out Select Choir. <laughs> so not only are students able to attend the Teen Arts Festival, but they also have the chance to attend and participate in two of Cedar Creek's own events, known as Night on Broadway and Night of Disney. So Night on Broadway was actually started by Mr. Goodrich about seven years ago, and for those of you who don't know Mr. Goodrich, he is the man who heads all of our choir classes here at Cedar Creek. Um, so Night on Broadway is actually known as the talent show, but it's not an actual competition and it allows students to perform a song of their choice. The only catch is that the song must be from a Broadway show. Um, students who do wish to perform can go as a solo duet or small group and they must audition beforehand to get selected and participate. And the entire event is actually hosted by two students who introduce each act. And Night on Broadway is known as a fundraiser for the choir program. Um, and now we have Night at Disney. Um, Night at Disney is actually the exact same as Night on Broadway. The only thing is that the song of your choice must be from a Disney show or movie. Uh, both events are really important to Cedar Creek. Um, Night at Disney has actually only been held once, though. <laughs> um, it's definitely still an important event, though, because a lot of people like to take part in it. I mean, who doesn't love Disney? Uh, so these lines here represent sections of seating. So the back row here is percussion and then brass and then uh, lower woodwinds and French horn and then everybody else pretty much. Um, this is like the rest of the woodwinds. Uh, this here is Mr. Martinez's desk um, and this would be where he usually conducts from. Uh, all along here, all along this wall, is um, uh, closets, and um, this is where you could keep instruments and music and whatever you would need for uh, the class you have in here. Uh, this here is the doorway from the hallway, um, and this is a doorway to the outside. Um, it, there's usually an alarm on it, so you don't really want to open it without uh, asking. This big room here, well it's not really big, but this room here is um, Mr. Martinez's office. Uh, this room is a band and choir storage room. Uh, sometimes if you have sectionals, sometimes he'll stuff you in here. Um, but it's much bigger than the practice room, so it's nice. Um, these two practice rooms, they're pretty small, but uh, you can practice whatever you need to practice in here. Um, and this is another band uh, storage room. So um, he has like instruments and stuff in here. Uh, and there's so much stuff that is just stuffed in there.
Do you need to be a part of the in-school band class to be involved in after-school band activities? No, you can be in the marching band and jazz band without being in the band class. However, if you want to have a leadership position in the marching band or jazz band, you need to take the in-school band class. Also, for choir, you do not have to be in the choir class or select choir class if you would like to participate in after-school choir. So, in order to really balance your sports and other activities with band and choir is to be organized, make a schedule, have a calendar. In our phones, we all have calendars. Write down when you have your games, when you have your practices, when there's rehearsals, and or organize it. See when you when you have to go where, when you have to do what. So it will make things so much easier so that you're not last minute like, oh, I got to stay after school today because I have choir rehearsal. So you need to really be organized and really take responsibility for that and for your schedule. Besides that, make sure that your parents or your guardian, whoever's going to be driving you around, Make sure that they are aware of your schedule because you can catch the bus and things like that, but some things you do need to be driven to. So you should make sure that they know when you have things so that there's no conflicts between some stuff because you might have to go from one activity to the other activity. Um, besides that, with communicating with teachers, don't be afraid of your teachers. They are here for you. The teachers at Cedar Creek are so nice and so understanding like if you have something to go to none of them are going to be all grumpy about it they're going to be appreciative that you even t told them because they want to know with a team with a sports team you they're relying on you you're part of the team and even with band we're relying on all of our voices we're relying we're, we're relying on all of the instruments every single clarinet every single flute it's important so it's good to let them know ahead of time. They'd rather have you tell them than not tell them. So make sure that you let them know. And also with your communicating with your teachers, send them an email because sometimes they will forget that you told them. So it's nice to always send an email so that they can just be reminded of it and have it visually in front of them. And sometimes teachers will ask you to email them for those reasons. So it's always just good. Send a real quick email, you just like five minutes, probably less. But that's a really good way to communicate with your teachers um, and to make sure that you're able to have a very good balance between music and your other activities. Um, many of you may be wondering if while at Cedar Creek you can be a part of more than one uh, performing arts program at once. Um, you can. So I'm currently in choir and I also do theater. I know a lot of other students do choir, theater, and dance or choir, theater, and band, uh, band, theater, dance, they really mix it up. Um, all of the teachers are really flexible about the schedule so that you're able to do uh, more than one thing. Um, so go for it. If you have an interest, try it out. If you're interested in taking specific classes here at Cedar Creek, um, you should first contact your guidance counselor that is helping schedule your classes and ask them about that class because they might know the answer and they can also they might also have to accommodate it into your schedule somehow, move it around, you know. And if you're still unsure about that question, then reach out to Mr. Martinez, the band director, or Mr. Goodrich, the choir director, about that class. And you can find their info at the Cedar Creek website or at cedarcreekarts.org. And select choir is, an, is audition based, so you will need to contact Mr. Goodrich to set up an audition date, and then he will provide you with further information that you will need, like when, where, what you need to do, what you need to have prepared, and yeah. Um, I, I'll kind of give you a background of my music experience. For 
before I answer the question, so you know I'm a credible source. Um, I've played drums for 10 years. I'm not trying to brag, please don't take it that way. But I've played drums for 10 years. Um, I've played keys for probably like two years. Um, bass for like a year and a half. Um, my, my main instrument is drums. Um, I've, I've done music production for a while now. Um, but for those who are looking to pick up music in high school, um, that's a good choice. First of all, that's a good choice because um, music is just like one of my favorite things. I mean, it's not for everyone, but um, the truth is, like, picking it up is it's it's fun. Um, I've played for ten years for drums, like I said, and I give you, I guess, for some tips. Just, I mean, it's easier. I think it's easier to pick up music now because you have like I don't know. When I was seven, that's when I started drums. Yeah, I was seven. Um, I pay attention less than I would now. My attention span was nothing. So, um, I wasn't as prepared then. So, it's a good choice to pick it up now if you're gonna pick up at all. Um, it's gonna be better than picking it up later. It's gonna be better at waiting. So like, if you're thinking about getting it, picking up an instrument, whether it's guitar, drums, um, I don't care, saxophone, flute, um, whatever, just do it now. If you want to, if you feel like you want to do a piano too, I hear that a lot. Like I hear that from adults a lot. Like I wish I played piano when I, when, uh, when I was a kid or something like that. If you feel like you're gonna say that, then do it now. Um, I I don't think you really need to be too prepared. Don't don't prepare yourself. Just take a class, take a music class, instrumental music. Take instrumental music because um, our school offers that. Um, and like whoever you have, Mr. Literature, Martinez, either way, they're both great teachers. Um, I've been able to learn. I learned bass basically in that class last year, instrumental, and this year I've been doing drums just to kind of further my drumming. And it's just, it's just really, they're really good teachers, and I continue to get further and further with my instrument. Um, and it's, they do a really good job. So like, if you're really thinking about it, how do I pick up an instrument? high school it's it's gonna be easier than when you were younger and easier than you're older so just go for it like even if you don't have skill in it Mr. Gurich and Martinez are really really good at um, helping you out and um, pushing you and, and and getting you through the basics yeah just picking it up is just is the first step and if you don't like that instrument you can move on like, like try a different instrument um, if you're considering just go for it work hard you know like it's not like a cliche type phrase just work hard like no nah, it's it's legit like like I've worked really hard over in my past like probably like seven or eight years of drumming like the first two years I was just kind of getting into it but, like I would be I would be farther along if I worked hard all those years um, so it sounds cliche but just do it work hard it, it pays off if you like the instrument it's gonna pay off working hard they say 30 minutes a day is, is going to be successful.